Greetings, listeners. I am your host and game master for the evening, Zach Barrett, and welcome to this Twisted Gear Studios production of Spacers, our Starfinder actual playcast. Last we left the crew, they arrived on a facility in a remote star system. Upon investigating, they stumble upon a swarm nest under observation. As they make their escape, a drat woman stands in their way to the meteor. Sorry, at the edge of the hallway leading into the hangar bay of this particular facility, just rolled initiative, and there's this um, levitating drow woman in front of you. Um, so drows who, for those who may not know, drows are basically the equivalent of dark elves. They're purple skinned, dark hair, um, very attractive features for those that are um, more humanoid than others. Um, and your guys' order, without saying where the villain is in this order, is Laurel, you rolled highest, Grek was next, then Kleptic, then Diantha. And somewhere in there is your nemesis, whose name has not been divulged to you guys, but uh, Kleptic seems to know very well. And before fighting even started, Kleptic, you had sent out a mind thrust, and you seemed to have hit her. And she looks kind of perturbed. Um, with that Laurel, you're up. Well, Kleptic doesn't like her. She's a bad guy, so I'm gonna yeah. shoot her. Shoot her. Uh, so I add my ranged attack to that. You add the attack bonus next to the weapon you're using. Okay, well, I'm shooting with my semi pistol, which gives it a 13. 13? Uh, you is it kinetic or is it energy? It's uh, kinetic. All right, so you fire and you watch, watch as she kind of just waves her hand and boing, and the bullet mm -hmm. shatters off. Anything else you want to do? You want to move? Uh, yeah. How far away from us is she? She's about 15 feet away from you. Okay. Um, then I'm going to go run and run up to her and I'm going to punch her. <laughs> well, you, you can't make a second action in the same turn. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you can run up to her. I'm, no, I'm just going to... Um, uh, have the bugs behind us broken through the glass yet? Do you want to take the rest of your movement to evaluate that? I am going to look behind us and see where the bugs are. All right, you take a look, and you see as the, the kind of like that scene in Infinity War where the, the oh. creatures are kind of crawling their way through. Yeah. A couple of them have, up to their waists, begun pulling themselves through the slit that was not completely sealed from the blast doors closing from the observation tank. Okay. So they're beginning to pull through. Got it. Then with that, Greg, it's your turn. Okay, so uh, Grek is not interested in sticking around here because he has no plans on being eaten by bugs as being the way that he goes out. He has much more grandiose plans than that. Oh, that's fair. So um, he's going to make the suggestion that we should probably get the hell out of here. And then he's going to shoot his revolver at the purple lady. And then he's going to start running towards the ship. <laughs> Okay. The direction roll, of the meteor. Roll the shoot. Okay. She is in between us and the ship? Correct. Yes. She is floating half, uh, five feet mm -hmm. above the ground. If necessary, well. I will acrobatics my way past her if nice. I can. <laughs> yeah. It's like the space is to. huge. It's not like you can't run around oh, her. Oh, I thought she was in the hallway. No, 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 no. no. She's in the center of the of the hangar space. You can't run around her. Okay. Um, so I'm going to uh, use my trick attack. Uh, challenge rating is 20 plus the uh, CR of my foe. Okay. Which I'll just tell you what I get on my D20. Yep. Yeah. I get a 16 on the D20. And I'm using the revolver, which has 1D8 piercing plus 1 damage. And it's also 1D8 for the um, my so, trick attack now. Really okay, so basically you get to deal extra damage. Yeah. Yeah, if, yeah, you, if you succeeded. So. All right, so you rolled for your trick attack. Roll for actual yeah. attack damage. So my actual attack damage. So if this misses, then that 20 may or may not be more useful. Yes. So you rolled 20 on the trick attack. What's yeah. the actual attack damage? Um, the actual attack, ooh, it's 12. 12? Yeah. So you kind of run along. You move your full 30 feet. 45 you, feet. 45 feet. You move the full 45 feet. You are on the 
opposite side of her, mm -hmm. further down the hangar bay, and you kind of run up one of the, the decrepit pieces of metal. Mm -hmm. You kind of jump up in the air, you flip, you shoot, it doesn't go anywhere near her, and you stick the landing. So you stuck the landing, but that bullet didn't even okay. didn't even get close to her. All right. All right. Um, <laughs> next up, it is the drow woman. She, with that, she looks at you, Cliptic. She goes, if that's how it's going to be. And she, her eyes go black with fury, like just completely pitch. And you guys kind of see the visual of like the air rippling around her, like a purple haze, like when you see heat in a cold environment. And she thrusts it out from her mind over towards Cliptic, kind of in rebuttal to what uh, Cliptic did to her. Uh, roll a little power saving throw. Shit. You can do it. I'm so nervous. That's uh, that's uh, seventeen. <laughs> hey, I'm doing math in my head. <laughs> uh, you're dealt seventeen points of damage. I'm dealt seventeen yes. points of damage. Now remember, it goes through your stamina first, and then into your health. Oh, oh my god. Oh my okay. god. As her this mind bitch. thrust slams yeah. into the oh, back of your bitch. mind. And then you can write on top of the other. Oh my god, okay, so. Yeah. <laughs> my heart's being so nervous, oh my god. Yeah. You get you get also get the feeling, and this is just information for, for Cliptic to use as he sees fit. But Cliptic, you've been in her presence before, you get the feeling that's not as tough as it could have been. Mm. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I knew that. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god, damn it. Okay. Oh god, uh, she so... chooses not to move. That's her action. She does not move. Cliptech, it's your turn. So I'm in pain. Oh, that didn't feel good. That didn't feel good. I'm yeah. going to try. Now, I'm going to apologize. I may not have what you needed from me last time. I was more likely, more than likely, be the exact same number for all your spells. Okay. Well, I want to try. I want to try Mind Breaker on her. Okay. So what does that one do? Mind Breaker. It says share pain. Spends one resolve to deal pain to enemy. So basically, the same amount of damage you were dealt, or. Well, All right, cool. So, do you have any resolve points to spend? Should have a couple. That would be. Yeah, I have five. Yeah. So, so I mark can... that down to four. Now, here's the fun thing about share pain. It is a reaction. It's not actually an action. So, as you're dealt the damage, you get to do this oh, for free. Spending resolve uh, in Starfinder, spending resolve is actually a big deal. The abilities resolve is the one thing that keeps you from death when your yeah. HP reaches zero. So to spend resolve to pull something off in game is actually a monumentous, is one of those monumental tasks. So this does not take up your action for your turn. However, she does have to roll a will saving throw or resist the effect of sharing the pain with you. And she has to roll over, I believe, uh, what's your willpower saving throw? My willpower. Oh, sorry, your um, your wisdom. What's your wisdom saving throw? My, wis my wisdom? My modifier, yeah. Oh, my modifier yeah. is plus four. Four? Okay, so she's got to roll over 14. Was it plus for the, oh, spell level, or was it not a spell? It's not a spell. It's not a spell, it's a supernatural ability, mm -hmm. which she does roll over. No! Uh, so you watch, and you were dealt 17 points of damage? Yes. All right, so you, uh, from everybody else watching this fight, as this woman thrusts this mental blast towards Cliptic, it hits him, and then it doesn't dissipate, and he kind of like, Donches forward and throws it back at her and it strikes into her and you do see some of it happening and a bit of blood begins to pool from her nose as some of that damage does take hold but you get the feeling that you've brushed off a chunk of it. Uh, so does that mean I still have one more action? Uh, that means that, you, you're, that, was, that wasn't even part of your turn to do that. So now it's your turn. Yeah, a, re a reaction is Shit. is a response to something. It doesn't take up anything a part of your turn. Okay. Um. Yeah. All right. I would like to hurl an object dealing one d six damage to the target. No. Cool. Roll the hit. Can you dash in this? System? I have a four. You can. Yeah. You roll the four and I... you. Uh, you got to roll the hit. Roll the hit. Wait. What? Yeah. 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 You have to roll a d twenty. Uh, yeah, that's one of those ones that doesn't automatically hit. You have to aim with. Damn that it. One. Yeah. So All right, 17. so 17. 
Uh, you fling it out, and she again kind of just thrusts Jesus. it off to the side. Damn it, Jiminy Christmas. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Any movement you want to use? Movement? Uh, no, that was just your action. Probably also want to get where Grek is, so probably around. Uh, what's, you got 30 feet of movement? Uh, speed, 30 feet, yes. Yep. So you, you don't quite get as far as Grek, but you, you kind of move on your way towards Grek and you kind of run past her. You feel her focus kind of following you in that kind of belittling way of how you're lesser than, and you get that feeling as you run past her. Dantha, you're the only one, uh, you and Laurel, the only two left by the hallway. Okay, I'm gonna use my movement to get right in front of the straw woman. And I'm gonna like, they block her, they, I should be the only thing she sees, block her vision from anybody else. I'm gonna say, you are done. And I'm gonna use dispiriting taunt. Ooh, what does it do? <laughs> um, intimidate check with same DC to demoralize and fail enemies off target until end of your next turn on a success, enemy is shaken. So I think that's like a save? Right. Oh, I make, I make an intimidate check, sorry. Oh wow, that just barely works. Oh, wow. So she is then, she, I believe she is off target. Off target? On a, on a fail enemy is off target on until end of your next turn on a success, enemy is shaken. Shaken? Yeah. Oh damn, she gets minus two to everything. So you... I'm right in front of her. That minus two to everything. So you go up and you're like, you're done, and you just yell in her face, and you you see a bit of like shake in her face. She wants to stand stoic, but you do see that there is some hesitance now in her movement towards whatever the next thing she's going to do is. Um, so she was only 15 feet away from you. You got another 15 feet of movement. You want to use that? So we are. All right, back to the top, Laurel. Uh, so since Diantha is now standing right in front of her, yep. I don't want to risk shooting her. Yep. So I am going to run oh, up. By the way, you hear more glass smashing, more chitinous forms moving behind you. Okay. Get on the ship. Why are you still standing there? Uh, it's a choice between. Do I, so. Uh, <clears throat> Okay, so it's a full action to look behind me. No, I'm still looking behind me. I turned around. Yeah, well, I would say just kind of taking a look and just a quick glance, there is really quickly, there's more progress. If you want to get okay. more detail than yeah, that, no, um, you have to stay. Either use your action or your movement. Yep. Yeah, the okay. Then as my action, I'm going to run up to her, to where Dianth is, and I am going to hit her with my Thunderstrike Pulse Gauntlet. You're going to hit Dianth? I know. Because I don't want to shoot Dianth, so I'm not going to So you're going to jump up next to Dianth and just punch this well. crazy, crazy witch. No, crazy sorry. witch. Bam, 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 bam. Ah! Why? 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 It comes to a nine. You swing and you kind of go past Deantha thinking, yeah, the ankle should be right here. She's floating five feet above the ground. And you swing underneath her toes. Uh, you got 15 feet more of movement. Out of here. Get on the ship. I can't move anymore. I can't move anymore. I can't move anymore. Do you want to yeah, yeah. spend, just expend the rest of your 15 feet of movement or you want to keep going? Can I grab Deantha and take her with me? And then my movement okay. is halved. Movement's halved. I will do that. Uh, do you resist her? Um, no. Nope. All right, so you only make an additional seven-ish feet okay. forward, and now she's completely turned around and is facing all of you as you run away. Greg, uh, you're 45 feet away from the ship. The big hangar, uh, hangar bay was completely open. How far away from her am I? Uh, you are about 30 feet away from her. Okay, perfect. Yeah. My service revolver has a range of 30 feet. Perfect. <laughs> and so I'm going to try shooting her again. I will once again do try it, my trick it. attack. So my stealth roll. Well, roll for damage first. See if it even hits. Oh, to see if it hits? Yeah, because that would, if you even miss, trick attack's going to do nothing. I would rather roll the six on the dice for my stealth roll than for my to hit roll. Wow. Um, 12 total. <laughs> uh, it does not. Okay, perfect. So my... Oh, you know, you know what? Uh, because it was the way you were doing it before and I didn't say it beforehand, you can roll one more time. So you can get it. I'll treat that as your stealth roll for this time. Okay. Uh, but 
there, yeah, your trick attack would have failed. So my, if that was my stealth roll for my like trick attack, that yeah. would be eighteen plus four because I have plus four plus stealth, so twenty one plus six, which. Yeah. 21 plus 6 yeah. for your stealth attack. Okay, now for trick my, attack. Mm -hmm. Now what are you rolling for your damage, for your hit? My hit is 21 this time. I rolled a 15 on the dice. 21? Mm -hmm. uh, roll all of it. Roll your damage for your gun. Roll your damage. Oh, uh, roll your damage for your gun, but that's it. Okay, uh, the gun is it's 1d8. I rolled 2, so plus and plus 1, so 3 points three of damage. piercing damage. Uh, you do a sp uh, like a spin kick and then fire, and you know, figuring that's going to be detracting enough. She kind of turns and it hits her, but you don't feel like the, the trick element had anything to do with the fact that you hit. Okay. Um, but um, yeah, you know, three points damage. Unfortunately, 45 feet is also my base speed now. And you so guys watch Greg. I'm exactly 45 feet away from the meteor. I'm yeah. in the ship. <laughs> yeah, Greg is safely inside the meteor. Um, yeah. Next up, this uh, woman turns around. She kind of glances at you, Deantha, having just gotten up into her, all up in her grill. Minus two. Uh, for anything that she has to roll, absolutely. Shit. Okay. Shit, 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 yeah. shit, shit, shit. Um, yeah. Oh, that's okay. I am magic resistant. She turns to you and she goes, am I really now? And as she says this, everything around you turns dark. You gotta roll a will saving throw. Okay. Am I good at that? I'm not miserable at it. <laughs> that roll though, yikes. Uh, that's a little, I'm gonna make it a plus two because it's spell bane, which is a nine. It's a nine. It's a nine. You are overcome with fear and you drop everything you're holding and you can't feel your legs. You were considered panicked. Um, the only thing you can do besides taking a negative two on anything and whatever you're holding you drop is run away. Okay. So uh, on your next turn, that's all you can do. She doesn't move. She stands, she stays floating there though. Uh, clip tick. Can I see if there's, how stable is this hangar? Like, can I knock something that the roof collapses? Uh, you wanna use your action to determine what possibilities uh, there are? Are there any, uh, can I determine if there, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna do that, yes. Determine okay, if there's any just charges. Be, just be anything. aware, it's possible that there isn't any. And I know. Be, okay, roll a perception check. So that would 17. Plus perception for you. Plus eight. So. 25. Thank you, yes. <laughs> um, the structural integrity of the facility itself doesn't seem to be in question. It's still pretty good. The, the only thing in question is anything on the opposite side of the hangar that you just came from. But in terms of what's near her, uh, there's things you could, you could throw next time you get the chance to. Um, I will say with a 25, roll, roll an intelligence check. This is my version of an idea roll. <laughs> with a high enough roll, I like to think that that idea would occur to someone, sense. but. Sorry. Just add your base mod. Oh, yeah, dang just, it, so 15. 15? I would say that with the 25 on your perception, the only thing I could think of is, while this may not affect her, um, you could use some abilities to close the door that the insects are coming, the oh, swarm yeah, are coming down from. Too, I? But you've already used your action, so yeah. that will not be a thing you can do this, to the, right. this turn. And your telepathy or your telekinesis only has a certain range. I know. And you are 45 feet away, or no, you are 60 feet away from the ship. Yep. What, and with 30 feet movement. 15 feet away from her, what do you want to do? Movement wise. <sighs> Probably run towards the ship. Full movement? Yeah. All right, 30 feet towards you, 30 feet away from the ship, and 45 feet away from the woman. Moving on to Deantha, you can only run in a direction that isn't where she is currently standing. I can't stay put, like you have to no, run? No, you have to run. Okay, I will run towards the ship, I suppose. And I dropped my sword, right? I can't pick it up. I'll let you roll to pick it up, 
but it comes at a minus two. So you can roll willpower at a minus two. Okay. The will saving throw or just a uh, will saving throw at a minus two, I would say. I can still run though, right? Oh yeah, it's not gonna stop you from running. Okay. That's not bad. The minus two. Uh, so 17. 17? I'll say that's enough to kind of grab your sword in, in a non-aggressive fashion. Yeah, yeah, just pick it up. Yeah, it, it, you're at the point now where I'm being nice not letting you lose your, your nice items, but if you were to get engaged in combat again, you'll it'll be knocked out of your hand. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. I'm not going to... All right, so you move your full movement as far as you can sure. away. Um, roll me an athletics check. Did you have to... You, the idea behind this is that the only thing your character is thinking of is running away. Yeah. So your action is also dedicated towards running away. So roll oh, an so it's going to be my 12-6. Exactly. Okay, that's pretty good. Um, You're lucky she was facing the opposite direction when she cast that. Hmm. Uh, like 20. Okay, you move 60 feet. You're uh, you're 15 feet away from being inside the ship. But you guys, uh, as as Laurel and Cliptic are heading towards the ship, Deanta <laughs> runs past you towards the ship, and you hear the engines kind of whirring a bit. Uh, furthermore. All of you, except for Greg, obviously, now hears the chitness movement and forms of creatures bustling down the hallway. Whatever has happened, they have now progressed past the uh, observation bay. Uh, Laurel, your turn. Okay. Mm, I am. Uh, how far away am I from the door to the hallway? Door to the hallway? Yeah, that we came through? Uh, 30 feet. No oh, 30 feet? Yeah, you're 30 okay. feet. Okay. Then I am going, to, and I'm a. Yeah. Um, I don't want to try to hit her again because I want to start running away. So I'm going to shoot her again, but I'm going to shoot her this time. I'm going to swing it off. I have it on my back, so I'm going to swing it. This, this, uh, when I see the other one, I'm going to swing my long uh, a rifle arc emitter and shoot her with that because it's an energy weapon. Nice. All right. Roll, roll the hit for that. Uh, that is a 25. Ooh, nice. That hits. Roll your damage. Uh, <laughs> Did you imagine if I said it missed? <laughs> no, it hits. It hits. I'd be so mad at you. Oh, it's not that bad. It's most of that bad. In my 24 intimidation. Barely made it. It's a it, five. So. It's a five damage? Yeah. All right, sweet. Um, do you watch as that damage strikes into her? She hits it. You watch as it has plenty of effect on her. And then she just glares up from Deantha. Almost laughing at Deantha's fear and then glaring at you as if you're the next one. I'm I'm gonna run. Yep. Uh, but I am going to make sure that I am still the last person. Okay. The furthest person, actually, the furthest person back right now is between you and Cliptic. Cliptic, yeah. you're 15 feet away from the. Oh no, you're 30 feet away from the ship. Shit, yeah. So you are. He's last. I'm just doing that. Yeah. So you're your last one. You're full 40. Uh, 30 feet, you're 45 feet away. Okay, yeah, my, my full distance, uh, my full speed uh, for just movement phase is actually 40 feet. Uh, I have a, because oh. I have a, a feet that that's, that gives me an extra 10 feet, but. Feet for feet? <laughs> All right, so uh, you are, you're caught that, up. I'm gonna make I'll sure say you're I'm caught up last. with, to keep it simple, you're caught up with Cliptic. Cool. But you are not past Cliptic. Right. Even if you wanted to be. Yeah. Um, Greg, you're on the ship, what are you doing? <laughs> Shooter. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Shoot her! That's funny. What what direction are the ship guns facing? <laughs> Not towards the hangar bay. Damn it. <laughs> no, I was thinking about like the doors when the bugs are be coming through, but I'm afraid that I probably bring down the whole friggin' thing. <sighs> um, I'm just going to actually um I need to make a pile in check, I'm assuming, to take us out of here. Yeah. So I'm gonna hold my action to make a polling check once everyone's on board. All right, fantastic. And I'll say the rest of your, the all, rest of your movement was to get from the entry bay of the ship to your piloting seat. Yep. Incidental will jump on in there. Okay, cool. Uh, next up, she, her, the great her, uh, floats forward towards Cliptic and Laurel, and uh, you watch as she thrusts her, her arm up towards you, Laurel. Okay. And I want you to roll a willpower saving throw. That is my worst saving throw. That makes sense. 14. 
14? Yeah. No. Uh, oh god! That's not good. No, it's not! <laughs> 31 oh, points no. of mental damage. Oh. I almost rolled max. Oh my god. Uh, Cliptic, as, as Laurel kind of catches up to you, you, you feel the humming and that thrumming of a, of a mental strike. And Laurel, you're not really familiar with this. It sounds like the air is vibrating until finally it just smacks you in the back of the head. Like if a concussion had a bat, it just hit you in the head with it. Ugh. And uh, you're beginning to bleed out of your nose a bit as your mind is in terrible pain. Um, I've been knocked prone, I'm guessing? No, no, no. Oh. It just hurts a lot. Okay. All right, Cliptic. <sighs> she is gaining on both of you, and your friends are getting hurt. Yeah, they are. Um, Get on the ship! Yeah. She's 15 feet away from you. She's 15 feet away from yeah, me? Yeah, taunting. Is she... Out of, like she's not running anymore. Laurel? Yeah. Oh, uh, she's still running. It hasn't just demobilized her. her. It just hurt her. It just hurt like a freight train. Fucking yeah. hate train. Okay. Um, I'm gonna continue to run towards the ship because this. Ah, am I though? Your full movement can get you onto the ships and like in the doorway. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I think that's the only option I can really take. So okay. I'll do um, it only gets you to the doorway, and you're technically in the ship, but you still have an action. I still have an action. So, what, in terms of gameplay here and practicality, if you move your full for thirty feet and then attack, you'll be out of range, but you can attack and then move your full thirty feet, and it won't change. The only difference is that oh, you actually okay. hit her. Oh, okay. I yeah. see. So, if you want to make an attack on her before you finish your run to the ship, you can. The other option is you use your action. To complete your movement and make it to your chair on the ship. I As see. Suggestions. See what I'm saying? Yeah. I see. Um, I'm actually going to uh, do the telekinetic projectile, which is hurl an object dealing 1d6 damage to a target and object. Now, the issue with that is you need an object nearby. Oh. You're outside of the hangar bay. Oh, Throw the poker table. <laughs> which is inside the ship, also out of reach. Yeah, let's not do that one. Let's go. Um, so. Just go. Okay, fine. Mind thrust again. Okay. Two d10 damage. So uh, I gotta roll willpower saving throw. Uh, oh. Not a. What a tragic day. <laughs> oh yeah. No. So roll your damage. Uh, so that's seventeen. Okay. So she stays here. Go down. All right, and you watch as she's flying towards you, and you, boom, you mentally thrust at her, and it, it hits her, and she shakes it off. It seems to it seems to strike and do damage, but she's still coming at you. you finish your movement as you're entering the doorway of the ship. Yep. Deantha. Am I still panicked? You are still panicked. You just really? renew your entire movement all the way back into the ship. Uh, with that, you are now in the safe confines of the ship. I'll say for the purposes of, of this and your introduction to the spell, it you begin to calm down, but if you go back outside, yeah. the, the panic will re -ensue. But okay. in terms of skill checks, you're beginning to calm yourself down a bit. Your heart rate's coming down. Um, with that, uh, the only one that's still outside is Laurel. Okay. And you hear the rustling and bustling of insectoid feet as they breach the hallway and are now in the hangar bay. Um, it's your turn. They're in the hangar bay, but they're still at the far end of the hangar. They're still well out of your reach, okay. yeah. Then I'm gonna shoot her one more time and then run onto the ship. So All right, roll it. Still with the Archimator. Yeah. Because she shot me. Jerk. Uh, Dick. Then, yeah. It's a 24. 24, that is enough. Roll for damage. See, brute force people, that's how you do it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Seven. Seven? Ooh. Okay, that's pretty good. Yeah. All right, so you whip around, <laughs> you fire at her, and it sh hits her right in the chest, and she takes it, then shakes, and then c resumes resumes chase. I assume you use the rest of your turn to make it inside the ship. Yeah, but before that, I'm like, eat it, and then I go. <laughs> oh my god, so threatening, so threatening. <laughs> yeah, she's not very creative in her threats. All right, she's just loud about them. And uh, you're on the ship. Yeah. 
You're officially there. Anyone want to? Either I of you two want to call it? Slam the button to close the door. <laughs> you get a sensor on your thing. Everyone's there. Roll a piloting check, please, Greg. This will be my Um, <laughs> I rolled a three on the dice. Plus 12, so 15. 15, that's enough. Okay. You power up the ship in frantic, and as you're looking out the, the Honestly, towards the, the starboard side of your ship out the window, you see as she, the woman, comes to a halt, still floating and staring up at your ship, and the swarm of swarm begin crawling out from around the walls and the ceiling of the ship like a cancer, just pouring out of the hangar van, covering the entire building. Some of them that are any of them that are on the floor continue their run out towards the ship as you have removed yourself from the ground. Um, Greg, what do you wish to do with the ship? We got guns, someone shoot her. I mean, uh, the, the, the gun is a forward facing arc, so you'd have to turn around, so that's totally up to you. But that's what I said. <laughs> I Let's get out of here. Yeah. I'm taking us the f- away from here. Yes. Yeah, that's fair. All right. And as Laurel and Cliptic kind of come up to the bridge, Greg, you just floor it and you sh- shoot your way up out of the atmosphere of the planet here with just a few minutes left in your guys' radial radiation clocks. Um, you head on out of the atmosphere past the derelict ship. Uh, Hmm. What uh, what I'd like you to do really quickly is anyone who I guess in this time everyone's now on the bridge and at your stations there. Um, do you intend on going back to the derelict ship, Crack, or no? All right. I want everybody to roll uh, perception checks, please. Fifteen. Fifteen. So six on the dice for Greg plus nine, so fifteen. Fifteen. Right. Ah, I'm going to elect not to roll. Ah, that's fair. Mm. You see, Deantha's just sweating and panting at the at the command perch. Twenty. Twenty. Yeah. All right. Uh, all three of you that did roll are able to notice that uh, some swarm vessels. They must be as the scanners are showing that something is chasing after you from the planet's surface. They begin firing towards the ship. Um, we're gonna have a round of starship combat. How's that Ooh. sound? Ooh! So, Greg, roll uh, roll some initiative, please. All right, so what's your piloting check there? My piloting check or initiative check? Uh, for, for initiative here, it's piloting. Oh, um, I got 32. 32. Oh my god. That is... I rolled a natural 20. Yeah, you guys get to go first. All right. So, uh, everyone decide now who's taking on one position. So, again, as a bit of a refresher of Starship Combat, there are three phases that'll happen in combat, and every single ship in combat will take a move within each phase before moving on to the next. First is an engineering phase. Next is a helm. Third is gunnery. Engineering is where any actions that involve assisting or helping out occur. Gunnery is just shooting, and helm is when... um, well, is when the ship moves. Uh, anyone who chooses the captain's position gets to uh, take their captain actions within any of the three phases. They just call out, I'd like to make my captain action now. Um, I've sent out cards before, but it's been a while back, of uh, little shortcuts of all the different options you guys are have at your disposal. So if you have those written down, basically, and depending on what level you are, you only have a certain selection of actions you can choose. So, uh, anyone who's calling out a position, please let me know now. And at the beginning of every turn, you can shift positions. So, Deanta. Captain. Captain Piazishan, Greg. Uh, that'll be... Um, Pilot. That'll yeah, happy your mention. Clip tech. Uh, science officer. Science officer position and... Gunner. Gunner. I mean, that's... I just figured I'd ask. All right, cool. <laughs> in that case, engineering... None of you are in the engineering position. I would like to go first as captain. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dianta, what are you going to do? I'm going to demand Greg to get us out of here. Um, so I'm just going to get us out. And what I have to do now, I have to plus four bonus to one check by clearing. I need to intimidate you. Let's 
I believe. Um, the DC is 15 plus one half. Your starship is tier, which is pretty low. So uh, that's enough. Barely enough, but it's enough. What's yep. the ben- bonus that Grek gets? We have plus four bonus to one check. Sweet. All right, mark it. Next up is Helm. Grek, you get to go first with the higher piloting check. Oh, sorry, uh, you get, so how, yes, this is in Star Wars. So you get to go first in your piloting check. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Uh, escape, I guess. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I just wanna take this as fast as I possibly can. All right, so let's put it this way. Going into drift is an engineering thing. So you can roll an engineering check from your your piloting console to initiate drift. Depending on your roll will determine how quickly the engines will boot up. So, I'll need you to roll an engineering check if, if drifting out of here is your intended plan. Uh, yeah, I'll take that because I'll take my bonus. Perfect, roll it. You said it was a plus, plus four. Plus yep. four. Scared. So I have a 13 on the dice, plus 11 for my engineering, plus 4 from Diantha's Intimidation. Nice. So basically, uh, 19 or something like that. <laughs> Alright, that is enough to activate the drift engine. It will take one turn to spool. Mm-hmm. So one full round after this one before uh, that comes about. Um, until then, you're only moving at just a straightforward line, and a couple of uh, two swarm ships begin to pull up on your guys' rear. Gunnery, uh, you guys get to go first. Well, we have a forward arc gun, and they are behind us. Oh, that sucks. Yep. Uh, well, I guess that's, they can shoot you. Yeah. Yay, running away! Alright. That first one. Hey, uh, what's the? Who's got the chip sheet? I do. All right. What's the? What's your guys's current aft shielding? Two. And what's your guys's KAC? Fourteen. Fourteen. Yeah. Against missiles, it's oh, it's also fourteen. Yeah. Okay. So you guys are dealt five minus two, so three points of damage. That's hull damage. Uh, that's all hull damage. I, t- I already subtracted your shields. The shields on the aft end are now depleted. Okay. And the other ship that's shooting at you misses completely. Okay. All right, back to the top. Anybody want to swap positions? I wasn't able to. I didn't do mine yet. You skip science officer. Oh, that's in the helm phase after Greg does their thing. What are you going to do? Um, I, I'm assuming this is after they shot at us. and. Uh, you're, you can move before they shoot, actually. That was my mistake. Um, hmm. I guess it would be scanning to see what weapons they've got, or scanning to see. Ah, I don't know. It's it, it, if I may. Yeah. I'll do this less and less as we go on, but you can also move the shields around. And yeah, that's what the I. Rear shields. That's what I thought. So I probably. And I will move. let you reduce the damage of what was just dealt by more, depending on how many shields you put on in the back. Yeah, yeah, that's probably what I'm probably gonna do. Okay, roll a computer check. Oh. <laughs> Uh, so that would be eight. <laughs> ah, okay, never mind. <laughs> you try, and the stress of the situation just isn't, it's not, it's not in your favor. No. Okay. I mean, it is a stressful situation, so. All right. I know. Back to the top, anyone want to move positions? No. Nope, like all right. Uh, engineering phase. Anyone wish to move, Diantha mostly? Um, uh, I'm not good at engineering, so I'll stay where I am. Let's keep them. And I guess I'll use my action to encourage uh, Grek, um, Grek, seriously, to get us out. Um, that's DC 10 of six. Faster, faster, uh, faster would be better. Or 15 diplomacy check. We have to beat a 15, I think. Yeah, sounds about right. Yep. <laughs> I beat 15, so you get a plus two to your next thing. All right. Sweet, you plus your next check there, Grek. Sweet. Moving on, speaking of which, to Helm. Uh, mm. Grek or um, Cliptic, who wants to go? Cliptic, you can go. Thank you. First. I'm going to try and do to divert shields again. Yep, roll a computer check. Back. Yep. 12. <laughs> not quite Dang enough. Dang it! Not quite. All right, Thank and again, you. the stress of the situation. Your hands are shaking as you're trying to move things around on that on that uh, console. Grek, 
uh, you watch as the two vessels behind you um, go ahead of you and they try to get in the way of where your drift engines are going to activate. And if they do so, you guys are going to be, be dealt a bunch of damage flying through a physical object. So you now have these two objects in front of you that will cause a lot of problems when you drift. How do you want to deal with it? Um, they're in front of us. That so brings us to a full stop. Do you want to bring to bring you to a full stop? Well, not like uh, slamming. Actually, I don't think your ship is capable of going to a full stop. Okay. It's not large enough. So I can slow us down, but I'll keep us in front of us this way Laurel can actually shoot at them. But immediately after this turn, you can hit drift. I was going to say, if you slow... It would still activate drift, but you would then have to speed back up to then get into drift. Oh, I see. Okay. So it prolongs your escape slightly. So in order to... The best thing to do in order to escape right now is to just maneuver past them. Yeah, get them out of your immediate line of, like, right in front of you. Okay. I will do, like, a maneuver then. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. What stunts would you like to pull off? Um, pull them off. That's all I ask. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. How many barrel What's... roll jokes can we make until it's not funny anymore? Uh, do a barrel roll! Um, oh, there it is. <laughs> that was our cat. You're welcome. <laughs> Proud of that. Proud moment. Um, am I able to do a flyby? You can, actually. You could pull off a flyby, which gives uh, Laurel some chances to hit them. And if you succeed, not only will she hit, you will be past them. Okay, so my DC is 20 plus 2 times the tier... Tier your ship? Tier of enemy ship, it says. Of enemy ship? Yeah. Okay, so I'll let you know if you succeed or not. Roll the die. Mm. And she gives you a plus 2. Yeah. Okay, so I got 17 on the die. Yeah. Plus two from Diantha, so 19 plus my piloting is 12. So 19 Ooh, so plus 12 is 31. That is enough. Yes. Uh, what's does that give any bon- bonuses to Laurel, or does that just give Laurel free attacks? Um, I think just free attacks because it'll burn us up along. Yeah. Roll some checks there, Laurel. Okay. Basically, she can fire ah. up right before we go past. Ah. Uh. Eight in total? Yeah. That's adding your, your piloting skill to that? No, adding my gunnery. Attack oh, gunnery? Bonus. Yeah, that works too. Ah, all right. So you fire and it kind of strikes off of the, the chit is high I mean, of the ships themselves. If I add my piloting, it's higher, but still is only a nine, so. Yeah, that nah, still would have just struck onto the you side. I did! Um, <laughs> now with the proper gunnery phase, Laurel, you get to shoot first. Come on. There we go. All right, that's a twenty. That's a twenty-two. Okay, yeah, that'll hit. What's the damage of your guys' uh, chain guns? Forty-four. I need to borrow some D fours, please. D fours? Yes, D- it is. Wait, wait, wait. Follow what? D follow what? I need one more. Oh, I have one. I have another one. I think I have another one. Yes, right here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's two, four, nine. Nine. So you deal nine points of damage as you guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's on the very tail end of your pass over from them. You can't hit one of them, but you hit the other one and you strike it as you go on past. You watch as the hull ruptures up on the top and doesn't destroy it, but deals a significant amount of damage. And there is nothing between you and uh, the drift activating. The drift begins to pull open. Um, Cliptic. Yes. One last time, you pass uh-huh. the derelict ship and the voices penetrate your mind again. But they do, now that you've familiarized yourselves with the ones that were down on the surface, yeah. th- these don't seem so malicious anymore. They do feel the same way that you that they were when you had arrived. Okay. But uh, having experienced full, full on what you were hearing down below, these ones were a little bit different. Do you want to give in to them? Briefly? I would like to, yes. All right, roll a perception check. That's a 15 plus an 8. So uh, that's, that's 20. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, that's right. All right. Um, whilst the initial time that you felt it, it was jarring due to its in- invasive nature, Yeah. it feels separate from the hive down below. Okay. And these words are the after, the after, basically echoes of, of a deceased hive mind. And they of a were deceased? Deceased hive mind. Whoever is on the ship has expired. Okay. But the, these voices were whispering, save yourself. 
as you hit drift and you have completely evacuated from the situation in its entirety. And now you guys are in drift? Hmm? You're in the drift? Oh, okay. What was that? I'm probably going to be sitting at my station, probably have gone all, not limp, but just like exhausted, ex, you know, <sighs> right? I, I turn uh, towards Kleptic uh, and I go, what, what is going on? There was a swarm down there, but there was also a drow. Drow are not swarm. How did she know you? I didn't think I'd see her again. See who? What is going on? The matriarch. Matriarch of what? Just evil. Well, yeah, I got that. And I'm just probably going to just get up and walk away to my chambers. Yep, clipped it up. Up and leaves. Leaving the three of you in the bridge alone. Or with each other. Am I the only one who's, who's disturbed by this? You don't work with the swarm. Nobody works with the swarm. They're just bugs. What was going on down there? I don't know. It didn't go well. Yeah? It was a testing station. Testing what? I don't know. Figuring out how they talk to each other, I guess. They talk to each other with their minds. There's one, like... I don't know. They just—they all think the same thing. Yeah. Could so, be gonna hear thoughts, but like, Clippy's a good bug. Yeah. So I guess someone was trying to figure out if they could replicate that or not. Okay. Did did we get anything else off the computer? Um, it was not really a place that was run by anybody that would be we would be familiar with, but it does root in a planet called a a pos a pos. A pass. A pass. Die. Everybody except for Ecliptic will a culture check. Because <laughs> Ecliptic is in fact not in the room. Oh, including me? What friend? Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, you would be familiar enough with the pasta. <laughs> Laura, what'd you get? A pasta. Two. Two? My God. <laughs> Greg's super cultured. He rolled a natural one. <laughs> Plus five. So six, uh, which I'm pretty sure is the exact same roll I got for my last culture check. A pass. A pass. A um, pass. That sounds like pasta. Nine. Nine? It's, that's enough. I need, it's like bare bones <laughs> Oh my God. The Aposte is the home planet of the drow. It is located within the packed worlds. It is a planet that uh, is... It's, it's in packed worlds. It's in packed world space. The same solar system as uh, Absalom Station. And you can visit it freely if you wanted to. No, not, a lot, not a lot of people do because it's kind of a creepy planet to be at. But um, yeah, there doesn't seem anything inherently wrong with Apostate's name being associated with something other than what it was that was going on. Yeah. It's a, it's a drought planet. It's nothing interesting. Why is that relevant? What? So why... Oh. What are we, what are we supposed to get there? Are we supposed to capture that? Are we supposed to capture that woman? Ah, everybody roll an intelligence check. <laughs> Everyone, even me, or no? No, not you, you're not in the room. <laughs> oh, God. Unnatural one. God. Unnatural one? I have oh a my minus God. one to my intelligence. <laughs> Rec rolled a 15, so he has 16 in total. Six. Rec! Yeah! <laughs> my God, someone broke. Well, I guess actually Dant as well. No, just Greg. Nope, not me. You recall you were going to collect coordinates or find some clue to the seven there. Something about this solar system was of importance and we're hoping to pull some kind of information about the seven or the solar system from wherever you were going. So... I, I feel like there's something happening in my brain right now, but I'm having trouble getting it out, so... You have an aneurysm? I, I don't know. What is that? I, I'm not sure, but it's not good. Uh, anyway, so we were supposed to come here because that boring guy sent us here or whatever. 
Yeah. And instead we found, well, what we found was a place that is interested in how the swarm talk to each other. Yeah, it was a trap. And uh, funded by the drow, I guess. So what did we actually learn from this? Well, he doesn't like the matriarch, yeah? Uh, I don't I don't either, apparently. Well, there was something the first time we met him that Clippy didn't like. It was, I don't know, it was confusing. But I don't think if he was going to send us into a trap, he'd send us at, he'd send us he'd send us to her. He knew these coordinates. So, so whatever they were doing, your it was had to do with the swarm. Maybe the swarm had something to do with the seven. So, maybe the seven and the drow are working together. Maybe they're the same thing. Well, he's not drow. Nah, he's just a jackass. I don't think that the Drow necessarily run the Seven, but the Seven consists of seven groups of people, no? It's not hard to think that at least one of them might be Drow. Or Swarm related in some way, but I don't understand the connection between this Drow woman and this Swarm. Well, she can control them. I... But how the Swarm aren't... They're controlled by... They're, they're not connected to the Drow, are they? No, they nope. have no connection. I don't but know they were, why. They were, they were trying to find out on the planet how to how the, how the swarm talk to each other, right? They talk to each other with their brains. And they, like, they all think the same thing. So if they're trying to figure that out, and she did, then that's how. Do you think Because, she... like, she shows up, and then they try to eat us, right? She wanted them to eat us. Do you think she led this scientific experiment? I don't think it matters if she led it. Glyptic said she was the matriarch, right? The matriarch is not. I mean. I go back to the heap. You guys talk to the captain. I really want a baguette right now. Why don't we just, like. I don't feel like we've got anything of, of import with this information. I don't know what to do with it. It just feels like. I'm gonna find Clippy. I get up. All right. Like While this conversation's happening, Clyptic, roll a perception check. Oof. Oof. That's not good. Uh, 12. That's enough. Oh, that's enough. As oh. you're headed towards the, the hammock chamber, the shared sleeping room. Okay. You hear one of the chairs get knocked over. <laughs> okay. What do you do? Investigate. Someone's you want to take a look? I'm going to take a look. All right. Oh, my God. Weapons? Anything like that? How do you wish to enter the space? Uh, I'm going to have my... I have my... Um, my battle glove is still going to be on. Oh, yeah. And so, but I will probably unsheath my knife. Okay. Just just in case. <laughs> okay. You enter the space, oh my God. and you see that sure enough, one of the chairs is rocking in its fallen position, having just recently been knocked over. You don't see what did it. Yes. What do you do? <laughs> do I, sorry, you said it. You rocked. don't see what did it. You just see that the chair is rocking, and it has just recently been knocked over. Um... Is there a panel that I can hail the bridge? No. Oh, damn it, Zach! <laughs> um, I'm gonna go in. You're going in? I'm going in. Oh. Okay. <laughs> you hear the, the clatter clatter of something claw like as it moves from one part, from one corner of the room to another. How do you wanna spend your turn? What do you wanna do? You want to try and look for it, or I... swing blindly? I hate this. Swing blindly. Swing blindly? <laughs> yes. Roll an attack. <laughs> so how do I do that? That's uh... roll, roll and add your, your attack bonus as you normally would. It would be, it'd be probably melee. No, whatever she's got in, and her attack bonus attached to the knife. Oh, to the knife? Oh, she doesn't, she hasn't written anything. Ah, okay, so then it's just your, whatever your base attack bonus is. Oh, strength. So, so that's adding on to my d20, right? Yep. So that's so roll, seven. <laughs> seven. You yeah. swing out and it, you, you see nothing, and you hear the feet run again somewhere else in the room. What do you do? Uh, Go into the room further. <laughs> What's your KAC? My KAC? Yeah. Oh my god. Is uh, it says twenty-two? 
No, wait, 14. I was gonna say, holy cow. No, no, that's AC versus combat maneuvers. KAC is 14, my bad. As you step further in, you look to the left and you look to the right. As you look to the right, a figure pushes you down and continues running out the hallway and down to the aft of the ship. What do you do? Run after it. You run after it? Run after it. Chase after it. You go on down and you head down to the engine room. Okay. The door was open by the time you got there, assuming leading you to assume it went in that direction. Oh my god. Okay. In the engine room, there's the loud whirring and humming of the pistons and the machinery that operate the engines. This yeah. Perception you check. This is how you die in a horror perception. movie. Perception. Yeah, perception This is how check. you die in a horror movie. <laughs> this is how it all ends. This is not helping. <laughs> Bailey. 12. 12? Yeah. Oh. You hear a... <laughs> Like very distinctly labored breathing oh. coming from behind one of the one of the consoles. I have one more spell. Well, you're not invisible as visual sight of it. You do have to go around the console to see what it is. Dang it. Uh, okay, then I will. Right. <laughs> how do you, how do you go around? How do you cautiously? Push? You slowly step Great forward, and what you see is a little surprising. There is Sheeran that is kind of clambered into the corner and it's clutching onto itself uh, a gash that's been carved out similar to the gashes of the individuals you found back on the planet. Uh, and there is only a sleeve left of whatever was a white robe it seems to have had on. Okay. Um, recalling that there was a bit missing from the lab coat. Oh, you didn't go and investigate that ship. No. So it's got a piece of a lab coat left on it, and a okay. gash on its on its chest, and it seems to be breathing very heavily and labored from the from the wound on its chest, and skittering away from you as if trying to hide. I'm gonna sheath my knife and I'm gonna go up to it, but I'm gonna talk because I can talk telepathically to my own kin. Yeah, of course you can. Um, so it's probably gonna be in my own language and probably be like, "Peace. Who are you?" Roll a diplomacy check. Woo! Good rolls. What? <laughs> I know, right? Uh, so that's uh, that's twenty four. Twenty four. Oh, that's like Whoa. a. It's. It seems to your respond. Your approach of it seems to calm it down. And it, physically, it tries to make a sound, and it is incapable. And instead, you only hear like labored neural responses from the telepathy. Okay. And it just kind of stutters. And then it passes out on the ground. Thank you for listening to this Just at Gear Studios production. The next episode of Spacers will air Tuesday, September 3rd. Until then, Tuesday, August 27th, is the next episode of The Call, our Call of Cthulhu actual playcast GM'd by Derek Snow. The game system used today was the Starfinder game system by Paizo. Music, sound effects, and ambient tracks in this episode licensed through Video Copilot, Triune Films, and Sirenscape. You can find all of Twisted Gears' podcasts on YouTube, Google Play, Apple Music, and Spotify. Please like and follow the Twisted Gear Studios' Facebook page, and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at the Twisted Gear. Your players this evening were Janessa Coles, Lindsay Delansky, Elizabeth Wells, and Bailey Yarkey. Your audio operator tonight was Rob Hickey, and I was your host and GM, Zach Barrett. If you happen to be in the Fort McMurray area, you can find me at Tavern on Main every Monday at 7.30pm for trivia. Have a good night, everyone, and we'll see you next time.